Welcome back to Close Up. It's still too early to get a good read on what the 2020 election will be all about. But for Democrats, there's a chance it could be the year of the mayor as two city leaders try to make the jump from Main Street to 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. One of them is Wayne Messam, the mayor of Miramar, Florida, who's our guest this morning, making his first visit to New Hampshire. Mayor Messam, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So this might be the first time uh, some people in the Granite State have seen and heard from you. So tell us a little bit about who you are and why you're running for president. Well, I'm Miramar Mayor Wayne Messam down in South Florida, a suburb community between Miami and Fort Lauderdale. We're actually the 13th largest city in the United States, and I'm running for president of the United States as a son of immigrants. Now, my father was a contract sugarcane cutter that was um, brought into South Florida on an annual basis um, to do very hard labor work, and at times working for 75 cents per row of sugarcane. You know, and he eventually had the opportunity to um, become a permanent resident and eventually a naturalized um, American citizen. Um, I was the first of my parents' kids who were born in the United States. Um, I've always um, had a, um, a life that has been built on his American dream um, that for himself and his wife and, our, and, and my, my siblings. And I went on to Florida State University on a football and academic scholarship um, to play for legendary coach Bobby Bowden. Um, I was on Florida State's first national championship football team um, where um, Charlie Ward, Heisman Trophy winner. Um, I caught my first touchdown from him my freshman year. Um, so um, I served as student government vice president at Florida State University and um, actually had a shot at the NFL. My NFL career was cut short. My wife and I, we um, a few years later, started a construction management business in South Florida, one of the fastest growing minority owned construction companies um, in Florida. And uh, we're very proud of that. And, um, and actually went on to get involved in my community, ran for city commission where I was elected in 2011 um, by a narrow election and after my first four-year term, decided to unseat a 20-year incumbent um, and becoming our city's first um, African-American mayor. Um, Miramar, Florida is approximately 150,000 residents. Uh, we have one of the fastest growing economies in the nation. Um, our business environment is um, very uh, business friendly. In fact, uh, we are beating China in terms of um, retaining and attracting um, uh, manufacturing and jobs in our corp in our city. So um, the city of Miramar, we're dealing with a lot of progressive issues. Um, I banned the box in our city um, in terms of uh, giving uh, uh, ex-felons a, a, a fair look at initial screenings for employment. Uh, we passed the living wage in the city of Miramar. Um, in fact, right now, um, just this week, we actually filed a, um, a petition to the Supreme Court um, so that we could stop um, oil drilling that is being proposed right outside of the border of our city. And, um, and finally, right now, uh, we are actually um, suing the state of Florida so that local municipalities in the state can have more of a say in gun safety. Um, in fact, in the state of Florida right now, if I as a mayor bring before my city commission an agenda to see if we want to um, ban assault-style weapons in our city, I can be removed from office by the governor, find $5,000 personally, and our city could be exposed to, to litigation. And that's just because of the grip the NRA has on the Florida legislature. So when I think about the American dream that my parents came to this country for, that I have been able to benefit from, um, I'm living that American dream. But when you look at the, the, the plight of the American people across this country, um, access to health care is escaping them, seniors having to uh, contemplate whether to buy their life-saving prescription medicine or pay rent, um, um, having to work um, two and three jobs just to make ends meet, that American dream is slipping away from a lot of Americans. So I'm running to give Americans a second chance at the American dream. How about climate change? What have you done as mayor to address the issue of climate change? Well, actually, obviously, um, Florida and South Florida is ground zero for sea level rise, but climate change is more than just sea level rise. Um, farmers across this country are seeing a shift in their crops and their production. Um, and I think um, in terms of as a local, as a mayor, as a local leader, uh, we don't have the luxury to wait on Washington to deal with our infrastructure needs. And I address uh, climate change in terms of how do we deal with that is, is by us um, addressing and building up our infrastructure. And it's been Florida we have to raise our streets. You know, the city of Miramar is a full service city. We have our own water utilities. We are a full service city. Um, South Florida, there's issues in terms of sea level rise. We have a lot of salt water intrusion that's threatening our, our water supply. Um, so we have to deal with a lot of these issues. Um, but I think that in terms of climate change, um, uh, there's a lot of discussion right now nationally uh, because of the proposal of the Green New Deal. Um, I um, support the, uh, the end goal and the urgency of the Green New Deal. I think it has brought um, needed 
um, attention to this issue that is not really a debate on the science, but really the realities and the consequences of it. And I look forward to proposing uh, my own plan that would have the, the scale and the urgency and dealing with, uh, with the urgency as the, as the New Deal in terms of us uh, being more resilient, of us being able to respond and to um, basically survive all of the impacts of climate change. So here's a question that every Democrat coming to New Hampshire and running for president is being asked by their fellow Democrats who are possibly going to vote for them in the primary. Everyone wants to know on the Democratic side, if you're the nominee in 2020, what's your plan and your strategy to take on and win against President Trump? Well, I think um, I think what, what voters are looking for is someone not only who can beat Trump, but someone who's just just the opposite of President Trump. Um, you have a, uh, a president right now that is dividing America. You have a president right now that really isn't um, working for the average American, hardworking Americans. Um, a mess of administration will ensure that we have a tax code that gives relief um, to average day Americans. Um, I was the first um, Democratic um, candidate to propose the student loan debt forgiveness program that goes much farther than what has um, subsequently come out by other candidates. I want to eliminate the entire $1.5 trillion so that hardworking Americans who have been told for decades to have a high paying job, you have to go to college. You have to get a four year degree. In fact, employers are requiring you to have this. But yet, if you're from a family that can't afford thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars per year to go to college, you have to seek financial aid. And oftentimes that financial aid has the complexion of a very hefty student loan and they're carrying that burden while the country and corporations are benefiting from having skilled and educated workforce. I think we can share that burden across the board. So um, before we take care of the cost of high education right now, which is important and we have plans on how to deal with that, we have to release the and forgive the $1.5 trillion as an economic stimulus because it'll add 80 to $100 billion to the um, gross domestic product. It'll create one million to one and a half million jobs in just in the first year alone, freeing up $400 a month in payments and eliminating uh, on average $30,000 in debt that not only students have and recent graduates have, but mothers, fathers, and grandparents are carrying this burden for their children to ensure that they're educated so they can have that high paying job. Voters love to see an elected official who can work across the aisle. Can you name a Republican in Washington you would be working with as president? Well, the thing is, is that I think um, it's about solving, serving issues. The problem with Washington is it's broken. And the very nature of the question to say that there's a partisan divide. You know, as a mayor, uh, we work in a nonpartisan environment environment. That's our world as mayors. We don't see red or blue. What we see are streets flooding. What we see is how do we reduce crime in our communities. What we see is how do we ensure that seniors have social services that can help them live the best of their years. So if I will work with anyone, whether they're Democrat, Independent, or Republican, to solve this nation's challenges. And that is why I think this, um, this 2020 election cycle needs a fresh approach, someone away from Washington who can really look at issues and have a different perspective as it relates to the partisan divide in Congress. Because you're going into a situation, not as a U.S. Senator who's a, a Democrat that's boxed in their corner and it's my way or the highway our party's way. I think what has to happen is that we have to force the issue and have the political will to solve the issue so that Americans can have a chance to achieve their own respective American dream. One area where experience does matter is foreign policy. How would you play catch up on that issue? Uh, because you'd be learning on the job there essentially as president. Well, regardless of whoever you are as president, um, you're going, you're not going to meet every scenario that is falls within the reins of the president of the United States. When I launched my exploratory committee, on March 13th. I actually took an independent trip to Israel. Um, I met with the, the, um, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. I met with one of their high deputy ministers. I met with the deputy speaker of the Knesset, as well as the far right wing of the Israeli party as well as the Labor Party uh, in Israel. The next day I went to Ramallah. I met with uh, Dr. Saeed Arafat, who actually um, negotiated the, the Oswald Accord. I uh, met with um, every average day Palestinians as well as Israeli people. And what stood out was that they all want to directly negotiate 
to ultimately resolve their two-state solution, which they both agree to. And currently right now, this administration is doing everything but um, facilitating that process. We as a nation has lost our reputation as being an honest broker. What will guide me as commander in chief and the president of the United States as it relates to foreign policy is that I will work to restore um, that, that viewpoint and that trust with our allies and, and our and neighbors across um, the various oceans of this, of this earth to see that America will be the honest broker that we've been for years because we have to get away from this administration that has made enemies of our allies and friends and has have befriended our enemies and have taken an isolationist um, position in terms of solving these issues. And that's what's so critical. Mayor Messam, we thank you for joining us here on Close Up, and we'll see you out there on the campaign trail. Thanks for having me.